The following is a production of FSM, where Northwest fans come first. time of year the family the feast and let's roll out some basketballs let's have a good old time the Washington Huskies are ready to rock and roll as it's time to play basketball the Huskies taking on the Tigers of Pacific out of Stockton California at the Bank of America Arena along with Francis Williams I'm Kevin Calabro and welcome in everybody well the Washington Huskies stand two and three on the year coming off a tournament in which they lost to the defending champion Kansas Jayhawks by 19 but then reversed their fortunes and actually played a heck of a game against the Florida Gators then ranked 17th in the country the Huskies came up two points short but what happened in that 24 hours to turn this thing around for the Huskies well it really was a contrast the first night against Kansas the Huskies offensively just could not get anything going they only scored a total of 54 points to turn the ball over 15 times shot 29 percent from the field. So it was a real tough night for the Huskies offensively. But the second night against Florida, the Huskies did a really good job of understanding that what they had to do as far as playing inside out. And playing inside out, they had Isaiah Thomas attacking the paint, see him dropping the ball off to John Brockman. And so they were able to share the wealth and shot a much better percentage from the floor and gave themselves a chance to win, although they came up just a little bit short against the Gators. Yeah, that offense has got to go through Brockman. He was two for nine, but did have the 18 rebounds against Kansas. Came up with a 22 and 11 effort. And then Isaiah Thomas, very economical line, Francis, 17 points, nine assists in the two-point loss to the Gators. Yeah, the nine assists is the, is the uh, statistic that Coach Romar is really excited about. And as he told us in our pregame conversation, he can't wait for today's game. Pacific 2-1 and one, coming off a win in Reno over Nevada, 67-59. And they are led by the 6'7 senior, Anthony Brown. Anthony Brown, fifth-year senior, 6'7. He's been in this program. He understands it inside and out. And it'll be an interesting matchup on the inside with he and Willard against the strength of John Brockman. Justin Dentman shooting 47% beyond three. That 20-foot, 9-inch, 1-foot distance improvement in the offseason hasn't affected his range at all and they will need that distance to open up things inside for Brockman will get underway as the Huskies meet Pacific next. Welcome everybody the Huskies are set to take on Pacific. Let's go down to the court the third member of our broadcast team this afternoon Jen Mueller Jenny. Well, Kevin, you know, there's a lot of fans that are going to be paying attention to Chad Troyer here. He plays for Pacific, but went to Seattle Prep. He's one of the best three-point shooters they have. In fact, he ranks second all-time for a three-point field goal percentage at Pacific. The guy right ahead of him is the son of his head coach, Bob Thomason. So you kind of got to wonder what coach is thinking as Chad closes in on that record. I can tell you exactly what Husky head coach Lorenzo Romar is thinking, though, as the dogs play their first of eight straight games here at Bank of America Arena. And talking to coach before the game, he said this is a great time to build momentum as they go into Pac-10 play in January. And guys, I got to think Coach is right on this one. I certainly hope they can pull out a win today. Jim, thank you. In fact, Francis, uh, we were talking to Lorenzo earlier this afternoon. He says, I can't wait for this game today to see if we learned our lesson. Yeah, well, from a coaching standpoint, you can't wait to see if what they went through down in Kansas City translates into this game and they continue to show that they're maturing and learning how to play with each other. And that uh, ends up resulting in a win. He's going to stay with the same five that he played in the two point loss to the Gators. Justin Dentman along with Isaiah Thomas, John Brockman, Quincy Pondexter and Darnell Gant. It'll be Chad Troyer, Joe Ford, Sam Willard, Terrell Smith and Anthony Brown and Pacific with an impressive win over Nevada coming into this afternoon's game. They beat Nevada down in Reno 67 to 59. The thing that we've talked about before the game the fact that Pacific is not a team that hurts themselves Lorenzo Romar said they've got an excellent system they stay within the system yeah they're going to run their half court offense they'll probably go deep into the shot clock they know they don't have the athletes to match up with Washington but they're, they're tournament tested they're a very strong team in the Big West so this will be a, an interesting afternoon for the Huskies Darnell Gant will stand in with Sam Willard and we'll get things underway our officials are Vern Harris Ruben Ramos and Bill Kennedy
First of eight in a row at home for the Huskies this afternoon, and we are underway, and it's John Brockman doubled outside to Thomas for the three. Splash, and the Huskies on top quickly, but the ball first went inside. And right away, dropping it off to Brockman, making the defense collapse, kick it back out to Isaiah for the three. Pacific out of the Big West. They have made multiple appearances in the NCAA tournament, notably in 2005, and the Huskies played them with both Nate Robinson and Brandon Roy in the second round. Lorenzo said they are a tough, tough out. Very disciplined. Ten on the shot clock, and this is Troyer. And he puts Pacific on the board. You really want to make Troyer put it on the floor. He's an excellent standstill shooter, but that's uh, showing a little expansion in his game for him to be able to put it on the floor and knock down the jumper. Troyer, the senior, transferred over from Miami of Ohio. Here's Dentman in deep. Got off a beautiful shot between defenders. Dentman here in the first two possessions for the Huskies being very aggressive and taking the ball toward the basket. Worked the high screen and roll. Huskies come to double it. And the man who popped out on the wing that gets the open look is Sam Willard. Yeah, Willard's a more than capable uh, outside shooter along with Brown and LaDuke when he comes off the bench. Dentman and Thomas, interchangeable guards. Both play one, both play two. Depending on what side the ball goes, you see Thomas moving it into the corner. There's Pondexter for the three. And good ball reversal. And, and Isaiah making that extra pass to get Pondexter a wide open look from the corner. Pondexter came into this game one of five from three. Brockman the overplay has the steal. Brockman elevates to the cup and lays it in. Yeah, nice job by the Huskies on the defensive end to get up in the passing lanes. Great start for the Huskies, Francis. They got it to Brockman on the first touch, and they lead by six. Yeah, well, John Brockman is, a lot of people don't understand what a good athlete he is, but you see him 30, 35 feet away from the basket, getting in hand in the passing lane and being able to handle the ball in the open court, going the basket strong for the finish. Pacific calls the timeout, and the Huskies open up four for four from the field thus far. Yeah, well, again, they're moving the ball very efficiently, so it looks like that carryover that Coach Romar was looking for is there with regards to their uh, offensive efficiency. Welcome in, everybody. Uh, previously watching Kansas beat Missouri. That's always a, a great matchup. We are here at the Bank of America Arena in Seattle, Washington. Along with Francis Williams and Jen Mueller, I'm Kevin Calabro. The Huskies have jumped out on top of Pacific 10-4. Pacific from the San Joaquin Valley, Stockton, California. The Roman is 6,100. Inside, this is Brown, and he is double. Good footwork, but did he walk? He sure did. Nice offensive set, but better defense that time for the Huskies to stop the initial look. Isaiah Thomas, the fabulously gifted freshman from Curtis High School in Tacoma, Washington. Along with Justin Detman, he is a senior from Carbondale, Illinois. Detman, good look, in and out. Rebound of the putback, and Pondexter in there working. Brockman tried to pry it free, does to Gant. Will they reset? Thomas will take it back into the mix, and he walks with the basketball. And he did travel. And, but one thing we, we need to mention, even though the Huskies played poorly against Kansas in that game where they got blown out. They did have 17 offensive rebounds in the first half. And that is has been a strength of the Husky team this season to really get on the glass. Brockman had 18 total rebounds. Of course, when you're shooting 29 percent, there's a lot of <laughs> stuff coming off your way. Nice backdoor lob to Brown. Brockman edges along the inline. Ball coughed up. Pacific will get it back. They have 19 to shoot. Brown, the fifth-year senior, walks with the basketball and another Pacific turnover. And again, defense suffocating Pacific when they kick it into the paint. Yeah, nice job by Dittman to dig down and give Brockman some help on the post. Uh, he's going to have to be careful because he's guarding Troyer, and if, he, if Brown is able to, to spot him and find him and he has an open look, he's dangerous from behind the arc. Ryan LaDuke steps in for Pacific, 6'8", 215 senior from Corona, California. He has the unenviable task of trying to guard Brockman now. Ball outside, tipped away, and Pacific has a two-on-one. Brockman goaltends, and Pacific will get the bucket. Nice job by Terrell Smith of the Tigers to get that steal in the open court. Makes a nice pass to Ford. Ford gives it right back to him for the layup. Nice way for the young man from Seattle to come in and get his first two points at Heckhead Pavilion. And a timeout called. 
22nd timeout with Washington leading Pacific 10 6. We mentioned the fact that the Huskies are home for a spell. They have eight in a row beginning this afternoon against this Pacific ball club. Catch more college hoops tonight with a Big 12 Pac 10 Hardwood Series. Corey Higgins in the Colorado Buffaloes battle, Anthony Goods and the Stanford Cardinal in an early season showdown. Coverage begins tonight at 7 30 here on FSN. Tommy Amaker making his uh, first year maiden voyage as the head coach of the Stanford Cardinal. Anthony Goods playing well for Stanford at uh, about 21 points per game. Time running down and Thomas slip but pops up gets it breaks the zone drives into the paint nowhere to go got caught in the air and turns it over. Here comes Pacific on a three on two. Troyer on the wing for three. Weak side rebound grabbed by Quincy Pondexter. Troyer has eight, had 85 threes last year for Pacific. Hasn't shot the ball very well here early in the season. They really need him to get going. Pacific with a zone, something that we saw Kansas do a great deal of, forcing the Huskies to prove their metal from beyond the arc. The legal screen set by Gant, and this will turn it back to Pacific. Well, you would expect to see a lot of zone here early against the Sonic. I'm sorry, <laughs> against the Huskies with their shooting woes. <laughs> so we we told Coach Romar early, did ask him, did he expect to see some zone, and he said absolutely. Dub has turned it over four times, Pacific three. Chad Troyer. Out on the way to Brian LeDuc. LeDuc in some trouble. And wisely will call a timeout. Again, the Huskies really getting after that basketball. You sense a, a renewed amount of energy in this game. Yeah, well, I think Pacific wants to establish a post game as well, trying to get the ball into to Willard, LaDuke, and, and Brown, but the Huskies are doing a very good job with the ball pressure and not allowing those passes into the post to be very easy passes. So great job by the Huskies here initially with their half-court defense. And Isaiah Thomas learning his way along here at the college level is a big step up from high school here to the college level. And there is length, there is quickness, and you're meeting it every night. Yeah, well, Ford, who got that pass there on, the, on that replay, he's 6'6", six, six, a 6'6 six, six point guard with a lot of length. So that's the type of player that could conceivably give Isaiah some trouble as he's maybe 5'9". In this matchup, we watch Isaiah Thomas. We watch Brian LaDuke, who's averaging 12 a game coming off the bench for Pacific. Nice high screen set to free the ball handler. The end line, missing inside and around the cup. Joe Ford, you're not going to get many opportunities like that against this Husky defense from what they've shown in the first five minutes. Timeout called on the floor. Huskies off to a good start, leading Pacific 10-6 here at Seattle. Huskies out in front of Pacific 10-6, along with Jen Bueller and Francis Williams. Kevin Calabro on hand. John Brockman. Thus far has gotten a few touches inside. He's averaging 18 points, nearly 13 rebounds a game. He is the leading scorer for the Huskies, who use up too much time in backcourt, or did they walk? They walk with a basketball. Turner and Overton just get in, and on the exchange, Turner picks up the pivot foot, and Pacific will take it on the fifth turnover of the afternoon. Yeah, well, Turner, who's just inserted into the game, a freshman, but if uh, Pacific wants to stay in the zone, he's a very good outside shooter, so I'm sure Coach Romar put him in to be the zone buster. Hot Dexter is on along with Gant and Brockman and joined Overton and Turner. And a whistle. Lorenzo Romar has Benoit Overton, the sophomore from Franklin High School in Seattle, along with Elston Turner out there coming off the bench. Turner, the 6'4 freshman from Missouri City, Texas, near Houston. This pass inside behind the zone, but again, Pacific unable to convert near the rim. Brockman on the run to Overton. His handoff to Gant, the big one two to the glass, fouled, and it'll be Gant stepping up to the line for a deuce. Well, when Benoit Overton comes into the game for Washington, it's typically the the defensive tempo of the game really picks up for them. He's a very good on the ball defender. You see the miss here by Pacific. Brockman gets the rebound and over to a nice job of centering the basketball, finding Gann on the trail, and he has a chance to go to the line and knock down two. 
Darnell from Crenshaw High School in Los Angeles, California. Their famous alumni is a good friend of mine and yours, Francis Marcus Johnson. Oh, yeah, a lot of history at Crenshaw. Absolutely. Kevin Ollie, another great one to come out of Crenshaw, who's played in the NBA for a number of years. And you'll have to keep an eye on Washington from the foul line. Gant split those two free throws, and that's about where they're shooting as a team right now, about 50%. Look at Brockman wrestle away the rebound, deflecting it to Elston Turner. Florida Holiday lobs it low to Brockman. Who, tremendous reaction inside by Terrell Smith to rip it away. He's got the pick, and Pacific now is in business. This is Joe Ford, the 6'6 junior, picks up the dribble and he swarmed. Gets bailed out, and they find Troyer on the wing, but quickly closing out the Husky defense. And Brockman. Bit too overzealous down there on the baseline, apparently, and a foul on Brockman. You see the nice entry pass to the post by Troyer to LaDuke. LaDuke drives the baseline there, and LaDuke's going to come in and be very aggressive offensively. He had 23 points against Nevada in their win the other night and uh, really sparked that win for Pacific. Third team foul on the Huskies in the first on Brockman. And There's a three offered up and in from Brian LaDuke, who came into this game hitting six of ten from three. He's number one on this team at scoring at 12 a game. Washington leading Pacific by a deuce. Justin Holiday from Chatsworth, California in the lineup. Holiday is a sophomore. Hondexer didn't have a lot of space. He'll dump it outside. 12 to shoot now for the Huskies. Swing it back to Pondexter. He hesitated and clutched when he let the three go. And the long rebound gathered in by Pacific. Bob Thomason, in his 21st year coaching here at Pacific, has a very disciplined Pacific basketball team. They won 21 a year ago, did not make the tournament. Newville into the lane, hard take, but Matthew Brian Ammoning deters him, and Overton the other way doesn't have numbers. He'll back it out. What did Holiday see there? I think the ball just slipped out of his hand. I think he wanted to reverse it to Turner in the corner. But the zone in last possession for Washington, the zone really stifled them. They really had nowhere to go. They kind of got content with passing the ball around the perimeter. They're going to have to get that ball in the inside and continue to do like they were before and attack that zone from the inside out. Overton really working Newville there. 23 to shoot for Pacific. And a bump foul called out on top, and this will be the 15th foul on the Huskies. A smaller lineup in for the Huskies right now, and the Huskies stay in the man to man, and so Pacific offensively goes to a four round one, and they're really trying to isolate Brown on the post against Brian Ammoning. That's the first foul on Poddexter, and actually the fourth team foul of Washington. Press the way the Huskies extend their defense. Look at Overton search his man in the corner. Now Overton will give him to Brad Ammoning, and they double him up. And Ammoning got a hand on it, deflects it to midcourt, and out of bounds. Last touch by Pacific and Brian Ledoux. Yep. Point guard has been a, a area of concern for Pacific. So any of those those high pick and rolls, or any any time the ball is out front, you see the Huskies double teaming the Pacific point guards and they're going to make them make decisions and handle the basketball and so far it's been real effective. Overton and Thomas now the guard tandem. Huskies have scored just a free throw in the last five and change. And that's good offense to get the ball inside against the zone. Von Dexter scoring as Brockman has gone to the bench. Brian Ammoning slipping his man and deflecting it away for the pick. Pondexter the crossover into the lane to lay it up and in. An excellent screen set down there to get him free. Absolutely. Brian Ammoning did a very nice job. But Quincy Pondexter, the Huskies are waiting for him to wake up and to get him going offensively. That's two nice offensive possessions for Pondexter and the Huskies. Pondexter comes in averaging a half dozen a ball game. Inside, this is Brown, Anthony Brown, with a little toss hook up and in. 
And that's where Pacific feels they have an advantage with this group, and they're trying to get the ball in there. They were finally able to do so, and he got a good look. Huskies by four. Ryan Amity, and that was all set up by a terrific pump fake. Show and go, Abs absolutely. Good patient move by Brian Amity. Amity is capable of scoring. He played in the U-20 league over in England. And actually in European league at 41 point effort against Czechoslovakia. But that's not what they need primarily from him at 6'9", 235. He can make a little noise in deep with his presence. As he does right there with that screen. Huskies by a half dozen, just about halfway through this first half of play. Francis, what are you seeing out there right now? Well, the one thing I really like is the defensive pressure that the Huskies are applying out front. Uh, they've been pretty stifling and making Pacific put the basketball on the floor. Seeing this possession here, anytime they've had a chance to double team the point guards, you'll see Isaiah o uh, Benoit Overton leave his man and he'll come and he'll double team right here and everybody else will just zone up back on the backside and just try to take those passing lanes away. Matthew Bryan Amining comes out along with Overton and Pondexter and Thomas. Dentman out there as well. Pacific off to a 5 for 11 shooting start. The Huskies at 7 for 11. Nice hard drive into the lane and scoring it is Brian LaDuke. And that was good recognition by LaDuke. They know that that double team is coming, so he slipped that pick and went to the basket, and they were able to get the ball to him for the easy layup. Denman watching as Thomas curls off the screen. The little lefty gets in and is fouled in the act and shoots two. So LaDuke, as we said, coming off a 23-point performance against Nevada and Pacific's last, last game. See him here just go to the basket, find a clear area, and go up strong and get the two. Foul on LaDuke, that's his first. And Isaiah Thomas at the free throw line. He is uh, coming into this game shooting 71% on 20 of 28. Pacific shooting at even 50%. Husky 7 for 11. With two of three falling from three for the Dogs. Thomas misses both free throws. And again, good ball pressure by Overton and good overplay by Thomas to get in the passing lanes. They have Pacific running their offense about 25, 30 feet away from the basket. James Duran, senior from Cameron Park. California is in the lineup now for Pacific. Ball got away. LaDuke finds it. Tried to slip it inside. Good anticipation as Dentman fronts the post. Has the pick. Steers it up the floor. Brockman fronted. Pondexter had a look. 24 to shoot. Over to nice pass. Ryan Amening with the bucket and is fouled and goes to the line. You have to be impressed with the Huskies guards in their interior passing. That's the second or third time that Overton or Thomas or Dittman has been able to get into the paint and drop it off to one of the big guys for an easy bucket. Second foul on LeDuc. And, and a healthy Brian Amining will really help the Huskies down low. He's a big body, as you said, had a great summer playing with the uh, under 20s over in Great Britain. And once they get him healthy, they're really expecting to lean on him heavily inside. Now they miss another free throw, though. That's a real bugaboo for the Huskies. Washington coming into this game as a team shooting 61% from the line. They're one of five in this game. Pacific with 19 to shoot. Down it goes for James Doran just in the lineup from three-point range. Pacific showing great poise and patience. Trailing by three. Amining hurried the pass to Overton in the corner and threw it out of bounds. And again, the turnovers, Francis, start to crop up on this Husky ball club. Yeah, well, between the turnovers and the missed free throws, that's really right now what's keeping Pacific in the basketball game. 
specific looking for some offense, they insert Doran, who's an excellent outside shooter. Ford was able to get into the paint and find the open guy, and Doran knocked down that shot, and that's what they need from him. Eight. They're still right there. Pardon me, eight turns on Washington. Seven to Pacific, and again, they are doubled, and a timeout called waiting for him at the 10-second line was Brockman and company. Well, they're going to continue, continue to apply that, that pressure out front. Ford made the two mistakes of number one dribbling to the corner, and then he dribbles into the corner <laughs> where he can get trapped, and then he picks up his dribble. So he had nowhere to go but to call that timeout, and I'm sure Coach Thomason is letting him have it about that right now. More Pac-10 basketball comes your way this week on FSN. The Washington State Cougars take on Idaho State this Tuesday from Pullman. And the Huskies will battle the Oklahoma State Cowboys on Thursday night as part of the Big 12 Pac-10 Hardwood Series. It's all this week right here on FSM. Cougars off to a great start. Gonzaga off to a tremendous start as well. College hoops in the state of Washington. Getting better and better. Huskies on top by three. Pacific ball with 15 to shoot. Pick and slip, nowhere to go outside. This is Troyer for three. And Darnell Gant may have pushed off in pursuit of the loose ball. Second foul on Gant. And the Huskies at the limit of six. Reset of the shot clock for Pacific. Joe Ford, the junior from Campbell High School in Altadena, California, feeding left side of the shooter. Cashing in is Chad Troyer. Watch out. If he gets going, mm -hmm. he can really knock him down from the outside. Troyer, however, has struggled in their three previous games, shooting just 22%. So you're right. Keep a lid on him. Here's Thomas with it. On the high screen, hesitation dribble drive. Gant with 16 to shoot. I'm not sure that's the one you want, but hey, you get an open look. Well, I think Gant is capable of making that, that mid-range jump shot, but again, the extra pass by the Huskies gives them an opportunity to get an open shot. Huskies with a streaky shooting start. They were 4-4, they went 0 for 4, and since then they've hit five in a row. Gant the rebound. Denman will run. Got Thomas veering out on the left side. He'll go to the rim and is fouled. Continuing to stay stay aggressive, but again they're getting they're doing what they need to do as far as getting the ball inside and getting the ball there with penetration as well. They're they're getting to the line, but now they've got to make some free throws. And if they can make the free throws, they'll be in good shape. Good pass by Thomas to Holiday. Holiday finds Gant. Gant knocks down that elbow jump shot. Good looking shot there by the youngster. But again, all about the penetration, driving, getting into the paint. This Pacific team is, is a long team, but they don't have a lot of width. They don't have space eaters inside. So they're going to have some driving lanes. Yeah, they don't have a, they don't have a lot of lot of foot speed either. I think that's I was a little surprised that they went away from the zone because the zone was was fairly effective for them. All right, we got one, fellas, one. Justin Dentman at the line comes in shooting 78 percent this year. And drills two here. After the main free throw, Elston Turner will come up. He'll pick up the ball 80 feet. And works Joe Ford at midcourt. Ford will drive right to the cup as the Huskies forgot to keep an eye on the ball. They were so concerned about pressuring the lanes, all the guys lost sight of the basketball and gave him that lane for the layup. Brockman wants it, but he's pushed up the lane. He's got an elbow jumper up and in. Shot. Turner also has to contain Ford out front too. He has the responsibility of not allowing Ford to just dr dribble by him. So he's got to do a better job of containing Ford off the dribble. Rockman with four points is two for two. Ford double team picks up the ball. May need help. He'll get it. Skip pass. Troyer open with balance. Missed it. Brockman inside digging for the rebound and a foul called. This will go against Pacific for the bump. So he's Brockman gets the ball here, just turns and faces. That's something that he's added to his game that makes him a very effective scorer. Timeout called on the floor. Huskies lead here in Seattle. 
Well, Huskies out on top of Pacific by 5, 727 to go here in the first half. Washington shooting 67%. Ball movement has been good. And when they have had a mind to, they've been able to get it through cracks and into the paint for buckets. Yeah, they offensively, they, they've been pretty efficient. The uh, problem that they've had is they had eight turnovers here in the first half, and uh, they've missed four free throws. So you couple those two statistics there, and they've, they've become a little bit more efficient in those two areas. Uh, they'll be doing a good job. Well, Huskies are up to seven team fouls, and that'll put Pacific at the line. The foul before the break was on John Brockman. That is the second on Brockman. So Lorenzo's got a reel in Brockman. He goes to the bench. Casey Niemeyer at the line, the one and one, and hits the first. He's a junior from Woodland, California. 6'8 and 240. Denton is on along with Thomas and Gantt. Turner and now Holiday. Two, two zone now so they can get out on the wings maybe take away some of those outside shots but right where you should go right to that that mid post high post area there there will be shots there yeah got a good look straight away two ball Gant with a rebound Thomas has the step couldn't elevate over the Pacific defense. Ford comes down with it. Ahead to Doran. Dentman may have been out of bounds when he had a hand on the ball. He was, and Pacific will get it back. Well, you see Pacific trying to take advantage of getting to the glass with Brockman out of the game. Terrell Smith is back in. Smith from Federal Way, Washington. Team with Durant. 6.32 to go in the first half. Anthony Brown is back in as well. And a walk called on Pacific. And Pacific has had their difficulties as well with the turnovers. That is their eighth of the game. So both clubs with eight turns, Francis. Yeah, and Pacific came in averaging only 10 turnovers per game. So this is a very high number for them. But the Husky pressure is uh, what I would attribute that to. Pacific again in that zone. Thomas surveys the scene. He'll swing it. On Dexter double. Pacific really bringing a lot of people to the far side. So a skip pass may work. Thomas with nine to shoot. Wriggles into the lane. Double clutches and scores. Brilliant move by Thomas. He just has a knack of being able to get in there and understands angles. And with that, that little left-hand shot of his, it's kind of unorthodox, but he's, we've been able to watch him around here do that for a long time, and he's just an uncanny scorer around the basket at his size. Powerful jump stop, too, huh, Francis? Absolutely. Just really exploded. Five points for Thomas. Holiday picks up the foul, and again, Pacific will get the chance at the one-and-one. Brockman will come back in and remember John playing with the two fouls at the 545 mark here the first half. But he's not a guy that when he gets himself a few early fouls uh, let, lets himself go. He, yeah, he's he, pretty good about measuring himself. He knows huh? how to remain physical which is a, a large part of his game but still be smart and, and uh, I would be surprised if he picked up a third foul unless it was something really inadvertent. LeVar Newville hit the first, missed the second. Pacific from the Big West trailing by five and Newville reaching in on Overton. This will be the fifth team foul on the Tigers. Well, Newville is the one guard that Pacific has that as far as speed and quickness, he can match up with the Husky backcourt. So I could see him maybe when they stay in the man, man to man defense where he can put some, some pressure out on the ball and maybe try to change the flow of the game defensively a little bit. On Dexter jabs left, moves right, high hanging hook, 10 feet away, missed it. Good recovery, stays with the play. Reset of the shot clock. On Dexter everywhere, he's omnipresent out there, and the crowd loves it. 
Overton splits a pair of defenders. Drives and kicks. And another turnover as Holiday took steps. Well, a nice job by Quincy Pondexter to track down that offensive board. Uh, he brings it out to Overton. And again, the Huskies are getting some good looks. It's just the turnovers right now that are keeping them from really opening up this game. Nine turns on Washington. They're forcing plenty. Pondexter again is around the ball. It's deflected away by Pacific out of bounds. Last touching that was Sam Willard. Troyer is going to come back in. And Brian Amening back in as well for Washington. Huskies rotating in nine different players here in the first half, so they should, should be fresh if they survive the first half with Brockman only having two fouls. They should be in pretty good shape for the second half. But they've got to take care of the basketball. Here's Thomas with it. Mid block to Brockman. Outside to Overton. Brockman now will readjust. We'll get it. Ball fakes and drives and reaching in to get a piece. Pacific's big man over there, Sam Willard. The officials are not allowing the players to put any hands on, <laughs> on guys out on the perimeter. Any any hand checking at all, it's a foul. And they've been consistent. Vern Harris and Ruben Ramos and Bill Kennedy are officials. Foul on Willard is his second. Team sixth. Look out on the inbounds. Thomas has it slapped away and a good hustle play. Very alert defense. LeVar Neuville. And Neuville again, off it, uh, speed and quickness wise, he can do some things defensively to affect this game. Overton looking for Thomas. Throws off the screen. Back to Overton. Nice pass. And around the cup and again is Pondexter for the putback. Yeah, he's he's been very effective on the offensive glass. They just don't don't have an answer for him. Nine point six rebounds for Quincy, and he's hit four of eight from the field. Largest lead held by the Huskies now at seven points. Brian Amity rips it. Thomas the show and go drifts in hard banker won't fall. Pacific is on the run. The Huskies fill the paint. Newville's got to turn it outside to a trailer. Anthony Brown turns and twists. Nice move as he was able to muster enough to get it up over Matthew. It was a good job by Brown to run the floor and transition and establish a low post position there so they could get him the ball. Nice, nice little jump hook. Pacific's already had a taste of the Pac-10. They lost at Cal to open the year 68-58. Cal with their new coach, uh, what's that guy's name? Mike Montgomery. Mike Montgomery. Yeah, that name's familiar. Why, yes. is, that, why is that a familiar name? <laughs> It'll be strange to see him on the <laughs> Cal sidelines as opposed to the Stanford sidelines. Timeout called, 3.21 to go in the half, and the Huskies in Seattle lead the Pacific Tigers, 29-24. Huskies out on top of Pacific, 29-24, 3.21 to go in the first half from the Bank America Arena here. In Seattle, Washington, Francis Williams, Quincy Pondexter right now really working hard around the rim. Well, the six offensive rebounds, or five offensive rebounds that he has and the nine points right now are probably the difference in the game for Washington. And as we said earlier, they need him to step up and pick up his game. We've been waiting for that explosion from him, but the one thing that he has been consistently doing is going to the glass, as Coach Romar told us when we spoke with him earlier today. Junior from Fresno, California, in the last five games of last season, averaged 15 points, six rebounds, and shot 51%. Husky woes from the line continues. Brockman on the front end misses. And Washington now just three for eight from the line, while shooting 52% from the field. Three minutes to go in the first half. This is Brown. Troyer. Nice readjustment after the pump fake and banked it in. We said earlier, you got to be careful if you double off a Troyer because if he gets a good look, he can knock those shots down. Troyer played at Seattle Prep. With Martel Webster, teammate. Here's Isaiah Thomas, shifts it left side to Benoit Overton. 16 to shoot for Washington. Brian Amity 
wants it and will get it. Backs, bumps, turns, hooks, and scores. Nice little twist and turn in there. That's huh? a good move, and on that, he's just too big and strong for Anthony Brown in, in that position on the post. They'll have to give him some help down there, or he'll be able to turn and score all night. Hamilton 6'9, 235. Big target, 212 to go first half. And again, they feed the post to Brown. And he walks to the basketball as Pondexter and Ryan Amity converge. Well, the Huskies were very patient in that offensive set coming out of the timeout. They finally got a mismatch where they where they could get the ball and do something with it. And Amity just read the defense and made a strong move, turned to the baseline, and nice job of kissing it off the glass. Scott Suggs in the lineup, fine-looking freshman, 6'6", out of Washington, Missouri. He was the Mr. Basketball of the state of Missouri last year. Appeared in two games previously this year for the Huskies. Suggs and Thomas Brockman. Brian Hamming out Overton. And it's Overton driving into the lane to lay it up and in. Just good ball movement. The Huskies have had a lot of success in that left baseline over there of attacking that side of the Pacific defense. Huskies open up the seven point lead again. The Huskies go to, to double team out front again against those point guards, but a reach and another foul. And so this time it'll be LeVar Neuville again to the free throw line. And Pacific thus far at the line, two for four. The foul is on Vanoy Overton. That is his second. Neuville, the Junior college transfer from Fairfield, California. Pacific in the Big West Conference. Last year they were represented by Cal State Fullerton in the NCAA tournament. Cal State Northridge was a co-regular season title champion as well in the Big West, but did not make the tournament. 21 and 10 overall, 11 and 5 in conference. And Coach Bob Thomason has had him to the NCAA as recently as 06. They were there in 97, 05, 04, and 06. As we mentioned earlier, they met the Huskies in the second round of the tournament in 05 and lost to a very good Washington team led by Brandon Roy and Nate Robinson. Huskies up 33-26. A minute left now in the first half. Dentman, the open look. And he cans a three. Well, Dittman came into the game shooting 47% from behind the arc, and he's continued his hot shooting. In fact, that uh, for Dittman with the three gives them four or six shooting out beyond the arc. Newville will pull up, miss it. Pondex to the rebound, 37 seconds left, and the Huskies up 10. Opportunity for the Huskies to go for the last shot here, just about a three second difference between the shot clock and the game clock. So Thomas will widen it out. He'll look to the bench. Lorenzo Romar will shift Pondexter up top at the elbow. You see Brian Ammon again deep. Denman to Thomas. High screen along Thomas the step. Scoops it up. Good as a pass. Pondexter redirects it, won't go. Pondexter goes down, ball comes free. Thomas will score it, but they say no basket. <laughs> well, Thomas steps over the fallen body of Pondexter and was able to sneak one in, but it will not count. Take a look again at the carnage down there, Fred. Well, again, Thomas goes to the to his left, as always. Pondexter with another offensive rebound. Brown gets it, can't clear it, loses it. You see four bodies on the floor, <laughs> but the bucket was just a little late. Halftime score, Huskies 36, Tigers 26. Let's send it down to the College Hoops Northwest Studios. Angie Mentink standing by with Lamar Hurd. Welcome, everybody, to Seattle, Washington, where halfway through the Washington Huskies lead Pacific from the Big West, 36 to 26. Huskies back home after playing in the O'Reilly Classic at the Sprint Center in uh, Kansas City, Missouri, a game that uh, they did not play very well at all, shooting just 29% in the loss to Kansas, but uh, responded, rebounded after losing by 19 to the Jayhawks to lose by two to the Gators. Before the game, Francis Williams, Lorenzo Romar says, I can't wait to see how our team responds. Now coming back from Kansas City, and they responded by getting into the paint and to the cup. 
Yeah, they did. Well, it started with the defensive pressure. They were able to get some steals and get out in the open court. And that just allowed them to really set the pace for this game. You saw Isaiah Thomas get into the paint. You saw Quincy Pondexter, Pondexter counting the offensive glass. And then finally, just a low post isolation to Brian Amining where he can make a nice patient move and kiss it off the glass. The numbers 54% shooting for Washington Pacific, 11 of 25. Three point shooting, three of five for Washington. Free throws, however, Washington three for eight. They turned the ball over nine times, but did force 10 turnovers. Points in the paint. There it is, 16 to 10 advantage for the Huskies. So I assume, rather than the uh, pointing out the obvious, Francis, which would be, let's take care of the basketball. What yeah. else is Lorenzo Romar talking to his club about at half? Well, I'm sure that he was happy with the with the defensive intensity and the fact that they really got after Pacific on the defensive end and caused a lot of havoc. But as you said, the obvious things are we've got to shoot the basketball better from the foul line. We did a good job of getting to the foul line, and we've got to take care of the ball. We can't turn it over nine times in a half again. Skip pass thrown cross court, and the ball to the sideline and out of bounds. Over there was Chad Troyer making the catch in front of Coach Thomason. Let's go down to the court and find out what the coach had to say, Jen Mueller. Well, Kevin, you mentioned Pacific's 11 for 25 shooting in the first half, and the coaching staff made a point of telling the team, you guys need to take better shots in the second half and really get good looks. On the other side, the Huskies were focusing on screening and ball movement. They want Chris Quincy Pondexter, who's got the ball right now, to be able to set some more screens inside to get open inside. So look for that in the second half, guys. And he bangs and bumps with Terrell Smith, and Smith got him for the foul. Well, that's one of the problems Pacific has. Terrell Smith, who starts for the Tigers at the three, is only about 6'3", maybe 6'4". So in his matchup against Pondexter, when Pacific's in the man-to-man, -man, the Huskies should concentrate on getting him the ball down low. Pondexter needs a timeout. He should have plenty of help right in front of his bench. And Washington, did they call the timeout? They did not. Huskies on the five-second turn it over to Pacific. Averaging 17 a game of the Huskies. That's their 10th here of the afternoon. Well, that should never happen in front of your own bench. 24 to shoot. Pacific with it. Troyer with it. And Gant did not give enough space inside on the pivot move. Brian LeDuc had it on the block. And already the first team foul on the Huskies and the third foul on Gant. Well, interestingly, Pacific did not start Anthony Brown here in the second half. We'll have to check and see if he's injured or if it's just Coach Thomason trying to send him a little message of not being very effective in the first half. Or maybe Casey Niemeyer has a little more heft. He is 6'8", 240, <laughs> and you're going to need somebody in there to battle Brockman. Huskies tip it out of bounds. It'll be Pacific basketball. Brown. Sluggish start for the uh, the Huskies here in the second half. Niemeyer wants the ball in deep, but they'll swing it up top. Troyer comes off the screen, pick and fade. The Huskies cover beautifully, responding out there again. Intercepted by Thomas. And Terrell Smith writing him down the floor, and the foul's called out on the floor. Well, that was a great job of, of having quick hands by Isaiah Thomas. Terrell Smith gets a little careless with the basketball out front, and uh, Isaiah Thomas just reaches in, pokes it away, and again, with that left hand, he's going to go strong to the basket. Second foul on Smith. Quick inbounds. Pondex with a nice ball thing. Hops and scores. And that's the matchup we just talked about. Uh, he's given, Smith has given away three or four inches down there, and the Huskies should exploit that until Pacific does something to switch it up. Huskies up a dozen, their largest lead. Joe Ford handling. Rips it through, drives. Pondexter trying to catch up, clipped him from the side, a foul, and shots coming to Ford. Quincy Pondexter being very aggressive here today, just has a total mismatch against Terrell Smith down on the low block. Pacific does not choose to double him, so that's just an easy turn and look to the basket for 
Pondexter, who's about 6'7", and Smith goes about 6'3". Second foul on Quincy on the play, sending four to the line, and that snaps an 8-0 run. The Huskies had held, carried back to the first half. Here comes Brown in for Meyer. Pondexter in the first half at nine points and nine rebounds. Sports free throw comes off. This is Justin Dentman with Darnell Gant. Better get it across. Definitely done. Spins away from a double team. Thomas wants to balance the floor with 16 to shoot. Let's see if it goes back to the zone because they were just totally overmatched inside when they were in the man to man. Pondexter keeps it alive and Brockman cleans it up. Yep, and then there's the risk you have when you go zone. You don't really have a man to check out. You got to have a tough rebounder from the weak side, and that time the Huskies just crashed the glass as they've done all season long. Well, I think he should get a rebound credit there. That was a controlled tip off the window. Here's Ford now with 19 to shoot. Well, he uses the free hand to gain an advantage on Pondexter, but the Huskies come the other way. Dentman goes right to the body of Troyer and draws the foul. Justin Dittman takes that shot from the outside. As we mentioned, the Huskies have been just tenacious on the offensive glass all season long. 17 yeah, offensive shoot. rebounds in the first half against Kansas. And there's an example again. Tipped by Pondexter. Brockman cleans up the garbage. Well, that free throw thing just <laughs> permeates the team. Here's the guy shooting 78% from the line coming into the game. And Dentman misses this one. And the Huskies, Francis, as a team, are three for nine. Yeah, it's been an area of concern going back to last season because the Huskies lost so many games coming down the stretch uh, you know, with some poor foul shooting. Washington up 14. And again, they trap the point guards out front then just zone up, try to get in the passing lanes and make them try to make the correct decision. Darrell Smith, nice set up to the big man sliding to the glass was Brian Leduc. Good job by Terrell Smith to get into the lane and use the bounce pass. Devin finds Thomas open. Again, Pondexter on the offensive play. Look at him just muscle up, and he draws the foul, and the crowd loves the effort from Quincy Pondexter. Well, as you mentioned, Kevin, he had nine rebounds in the first half, six of those on the offensive end, and he's just picking up where he left off in the first half again, going to the glass strong. Now we got to make some free throws. Starter in all five previous games. Pondexter has a double double, 12 points and 10 rebounds. Sam Willard will step in for Pacific, and Brian LaDuke retires to the bench. Pondexter missing, but tips it alive. And it is controlled by Newville of Pacific. Moving right with Nova. 25 to shoot. Huskies come out, traps the ball. Smith terminates the dribble. They've got Brown on a mismatch with Thomas inside if they could have seen him. Detman knocked down, and an offensive foul on Pacific gives it back to Washington. With a timeout on the court at five, making 15 57 to play here in the second half. It's all Huskies right now, up 13. Welcome back, everybody, along with Jen Mueller, Francis Williams. I'm Kevin Calabro. Washington at home, leading Pacific, 42-29. Let's take a look now at our Les Schwab league leaders. Well, leader of the pack. Talking about Lorenzo Romar. Active Pac-10 coaches with the most career wins at the school, 121. Romar right behind Ernie Kent and Ben Howland at UCLA. Well, Ernie's way up there, 214. He's got a young ball club this year. Yeah, he does. He does. Uh, they'll be relying heavily on, on Porter to try to lead that team until they get the youngsters into the fold. Can't wait to see Porter and Thomas square off. Speed on speed. There, Two there mighty go. mites. There you go. Dentman handling. Pacific in the zone. Matthew Bryan Hammoning. He had some moments in the first half. He's in there with Brockman up front with Pondexter as well. And 
Denman with three in his sights. Denman has really shot the ball well here early in the season for the for the Huskies. Newville throws it to the coach. Coach throws it to Joe Ford. Joe Ford in the game. Newville departs. That's the way that works. <laughs> Cause and effect, right? Yeah, well, we knew coming into the game that they had some poor point guard issues, and obviously in their scout, the Huskies have recognized that as well, and it has just been uh, no consistent guard play out front with the point guards. And Justin Dentman for the Huskies, who shoot the ball extremely well, you know, really did a good job in the offseason of getting his body together. He's a lot slimmer, a lot sleeker. He's in a lot better physical condition, mm -hmm. and I think that that has really allowed him to get off to this good start here that he finally, going into his senior season, paid attention to his body and he's looking real solid real strong right now. Anthony Brown holds Brockman. Huskies bring it in bounds. Brian Abney pulls it out of the club and sticks it back won't go. Huskies very active in the offensive glass just as they were in the loss to Kansas. First part of that is the function of their 29% shooting against the Jayhawks. Here's 14-41 now showing on the clock. And Pacific on the attack. It's Brown inside, and he is fouled. But Brown, Brown will shoot, too. Brown got a few good looks in the first half, not very many, but I think Coach Thomason was just not happy with his, his approach to the game when he came in. He was being real tentative when he got the ball, and that time you see he got the ball and turned and went strong to the basket and drew that foul. First foul on Matthew Brian Amening. MBA is his known. So if we refer to a player out there as MBA, you know who we're talking about. Anthony Brown steps up. Brown coming into this game averaged four turnovers per game, but was tied for the team lead in points at 12 a game. Now we should point out that Pacific had a disciplinary problem in the summer that resulted in the banishment of two of their starting players from last year's squad who presumably would be starting for this team this year. Yeah they, they were expecting to be the, the prohibitive favorite in the, in the in the Big West and as you said earlier Fullerton and Northridge are probably the favorite right now but uh, yeah those three players that uh, did leave the, the program uh, had they been a part of this group they were going to be very strong and about 10 deep. In fact, one of them was a point guard, the incumbent point guard. This time. Yes, well, and one of the kids, uh, Stephon Johnson, was uh, another part of that Seattle pipeline that Pacific has, and he's now at the University of Idaho. He was a first-team All Big West player last year. Overton to the base, nice setup, Brockman beneath the rim, powers it in. Well, Overton got lucky that time because he went <laughs> baseline. He had nowhere to go, but you, you're good to have a, a grown man down there that you know you can make that pass to, and he'll catch it. Six minutes gone by and a half. And the Huskies open up a 17-point lead. This is Smith. A little extra boost as he got up in the air on that one. Yeah, that, that was a tough shot for Terrell Smith in the lane there. Brockman on the wing will tee it up. Joe Ford the rebound for Pacific. Drive all the way to the paint and score it. Back-to-back -back buckets for the Tigers. Been a while. And the Huskies want a timeout with possession of the ball and a 13 point lead with 1335 left here in the half. We'll be back with more Husky basketballs. Pacific has ventured to Seattle for the holidays. Huskies up 13 with 1335 left here in the second half. Kids coming back to the neighborhood playing for Pacific. We start with Terrell Smith. Well, Terrell Smith out of Federal Way High School, first team All-State, uh, led the Federal Way team in scoring at almost 26 points a game his senior year. Had a nice freshman year last year at Pacific last year, but he's a part of the Seattle pipeline that we mentioned earlier. He's a very accomplished scorer, and as he gets more comfortable in this system, you will see him score more points. Chad Troyer from Seattle Prep was a teammate of uh, Martel Webster's when he was there. Excellent outside shooter, transferred to Pacific from Miami of Ohio two years there and then a, a set out the season and then is now in his senior year at Miami of Ohio and then in the crowd Sterling Carter who is a uh, senior at Fr Franklin High School here in Seattle they signed him this past season and although he's uh, injured injured right now will not be able to play his senior season at Franklin they're expecting big things from from him when he enters the Pacific program next year. On the hand 
handoff. Rockman to Overton, slapped off of Overton and out of bounds. Huskies come out with Elston Turner on the floor, the true freshman, along with John Brockman, Matthew, Brad Hammoning, Overton, and Holiday will pick up the ball at midcourt. We've got a couple of high school teammates playing against each other there at the point. Ford and Holiday were high school teammates at Campbell Hall High School down in Southern California. Official part of the playing surface. And unfortunately, it cost the Huskies possession of the basketball. Take a look. The officials are part of the scene. Yep, he's part of the, part of the court. And unfortunately for the Huskies, he, he was in the way. But uh, Ford and Holiday, high school teammates, Campbell Hall High School down in Southern Cal. Drew Holiday, freshman at UCLA, was a freshman when his brother was a sophomore, and Ford was a senior, and they uh, had an undefeated state championship season. Foul called inside as Pacific was uh, able to get it down to the block. And this is Sam Willard stepping up to the line. Fouls on Brian Ammoning. That is his second, and the fourth team foul on the Huskies. Here's a look at. Uh, Justin Holiday, long 6'6", sophomore, Chatsworth, California. Uh, Justin Dentman calls him the fireman. <laughs> the fireman, okay. Because of his uh, defensive prowess, he said, when, uh, when things are burning and we need somebody to put out the fire, we send in our man Justin Holiday. Long, spidery arm. But the Huskies were right in there for his brother Drew, who chose UCLA, but uh, was, came down to UCLA and Washington, and uh, we. The Huskies were almost blessed to have both holidays here. Boy, that would have been a real coup for the for the Huskies. Just when you think uh, all the freakish athletes <laughs> moved on to the NBA, Drew Holiday shows up down there at UCLA. Well, there's another good group of uh, freshmen coming into the Pac-10. Uh, he's probably the one that comes in the most decorated, but there there's a bunch of them. And when you have seven guys leave in the first round of the NBA draft, uh, it, it spoke very highly to the uh, comp level of competition in the Pac-10 last year. And some good ones in the second round. Kyle Weaver, Washington State. Yeah. And Bob Mute. Mute. Yes, yep. you're right. Harden at uh, California. Mm -hmm. Skip pass. Ford to the end line. Nice find. Turner with the rebound. 47-35 Huskies. And chopping his steps was Elston. That's a turnover. Huskies have played this way in the first half. They've had moments of brilliance, and then they just seem to leave their brains on the other end of the floor. Well, that consistency that Coach Romar was looking for, or the carryover from the Florida game into this game, we've had glimpses of it, but I think right now, and it's something that they cannot do, they are playing down to their competition right now. 5-0 Pacific run and a foul called in pursuit of the rebound on Washington. And non-shooting foul, the Pacific staff said he was in the act of controlling the tip back to the bucket. They didn't see it that way. That is the 15th foul on Washington. And it is the third foul on Vinoy Overton. So Pacific working with the reset. Ford trying to put it back up. He got hammered to the court and no whistle. Willard comes up with the rebound. Perrin inside, reverse pivot, scoop. No, on next to the rebound. Ford's a 6'6 point guard, so he can do some things around the basket. Brian Amity comes open. Powers up with a little reverse pivot, and he's fouled in the act of shooting. Kid has very nice fundamental footwork. He's such a uh, creates a wide base down there and has good hands. At 6'9, 240, he's going to be a load for a lot of people during the upcoming season. But as Washington team has taken a 12 point lead here at 11 uh, 28 of the second half, with John Brockman, let's face it, having a, by Brockman standards a so so game, eight points, three rebounds. That's a good sign for the Husky. That is a good sign. I mean, he comes in averaging 18 points and almost 13 rebounds per game. So uh, today, Pondexter has picked up the slack. 
Dentman has done a nice job from the outside. Brian Amening has, has established himself down on the post. So uh, again, they need to be able to spread the wealth because as you get deeper into the season and people start scouting you and taking things away, Brockman is probably not going to be able to just have his way the way he has here early in the season with everyone. Jim Mueller was down near the Washington bench during that last timeout as Brockman goes to the bench, Jim. Even when Brockman's on the bench, though, Kevin, he's still involved in the game. He's always the first one to give high fives coming off the court, especially to Quincy Pondexter on that last play. And I got to think, guys, that if John Brockman is giving anybody props about defense and playing inside, that's a pretty good sign for the way things are going, right? I would think so. Amening hits uh, one or two at the line and foul called. As again, Pacific down there in the half court operating. Huskies now. At the limit of six. Foul called on Thomas. That's his first. Go forward, met by Elston Turner. That name is familiar. Elston Turner played for a number of years in the NBA. And currently with the Houston Rockets, along with Jack Sigma, coaching the Houston Rockets, and assistant to Rick Adelman. Thomas. Kareem's into Ford. Ford uh, dramatic. Falling down, nearly rolling out of the building, but selling the call. Well, Thomas coming full speed on that dribble. Ford guessed right that he was going to go left and uh, got the benefit of the doubt on the call. But good defensive position that time by Ford. Pacific will bring it up. 10.49 left here in the second half. The Huskies have not decided this issue yet. They're up 11. Pacific showing signs of life. Brown catches it awfully deep and lays it up and in. They've been kind of going in and out with uh, Newmeyer and, and, and Brown down here on the post, and they have been able to get it in there, and I think if they just continue to pound it, they're, they haven't lost contact. It's a three-possession game, 10 minutes to go. They're right there. And it's exactly what Romar told us before the game. They're a team that will maintain contact with you give themselves a chance to win. They're very disciplined. Huskies need to go back to where they had their advantage, though. Pondexter hasn't really touched it down on the block in a few minutes. Dentman splits a pair of defenders and a running right-hander up and in. Beautifully done. Nice job by Dentman to split that double team and a nice little floater, little runner there in the lane. Nice soft touch. Dentman leads the Huskies with 13. Pondexter has a dozen. Brockman's on the floor. He's got eight. Ford shifts it over to Smith. Troyer inside to Brown, draws the crowd. Kick out to Smith, drives, leaves it for Brown. Bad pass, hit him at the knees. Yeah, that's a tough interior pass there on the move, trying to get the ball to the big guy. But a good defensive recovery that time by the Huskies also. But Smith looked like he had a wide open shot. Detman wide open and a good find from Elston Turner. Detman just inside the three-point arc. Yeah, nice job again by Dentman just getting to the open spot and the Huskies make that extra pass. And as we mentioned earlier, Dentman has really played well here early in the season and he's continuing his strong play and really shooting the ball well. Five of eight on the field for Dentman. Two of four for three. Ford misses the runner. And a rebound hauled in by Gant. Turner does a nice job of handling the ball out here and setting the floor for his teammates, doesn't he? Well, he has a nice feel for the game. As you mentioned, his dad played in the NBA, is now coaching in the NBA, so he has that, that in his blood, so to speak. But he understands his role, and as a freshman, he has really come in and really not had very many instances where he's been out of control. So he does have a, a kind of a steadying influence out there, which is, uh, is a, a lot to, to, to say and to give him credit for as a, as a true freshman. His dad was an assistant down in Sacramento for a while. He was at Roseville High School there in Sacramento, and then dad got the job down in Texas. High school career at uh, Elston Turner and Elkin High School uh, outside of Houston. His club went 31 and 4. Here's Pondexter now at the line. He rolls in the first free throw. How are we doing free throw wise here? The Huskies are 7 of 15. Second is up and in. Coach Romar showed a lot of confidence in, in Turner as a freshman as he was a part of that group that closed out that Florida game when they were within one shot of tying it up and sending it into overtime. So we had four youngsters and Brockman out there. He was looking for the carryover today. This is Smith, teeing up a three. Banks it you in. Call it? Did he bank that he in? He banked it in. All right. But it counts. Luck counts. Just wanted to make sure. We're seeing it right. 
And that was a case of a guy, I haven't had a shot in a while. I'm going to take one. <laughs> Why not? Uh-oh. Pondexter hurried it outside there. Denman? Justin says, I need to drop down to the level of the ball just like James Worthy. As Terrell Smith, sometimes better to be lucky than good. Right off the glass. That's not bad. Take your per diem money on those counts. There's Brown outside from the elbow. Showing some distance. And here comes Pacific. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, they're within 10 with 8-11 to play. Nice job of finding Brown. He steadies himself, squares up, takes the one bounce, knocks it down. Turner pops out, gamble screen, Turner to the end line, pull up, jumper, got it. That's a gorgeous move. But hard two dribble pull up. And again, he's showing a lot of poise and a lot of savvy for a true freshman. 12 point Husky lead, 7.48 to go in the second half. The first of eight home games in a row for the Huskies. Come on out and see this ball club at Bank of America Arena in Seattle. Jumper offered up and off the mark. Dentman with a rebound. Again, drop step spin. And he comes. Brockman the follow up and in. Cleaning it up. Cleaning it up. Huskies now with three players of double figures. Denman 15, Pondexter 14, and Brockman now with 10. Terrell Smith backs in on Turner. Foul calls in the act of shooting. And that's an area where Terrell Smith can be real effective if he's able to play his real position, which is the two. He's so big and strong, he can take smaller guards down into the block. But you see Elson Turner gets away with the little push off. Pulls up for the little baseline, Jay. And then, get it to the cup. Things happen. Brockman takes up a lot of space. Oh, you're going to eat that one up. 14-point Husky lead. College basketball on FSN brought to you this afternoon by Banner Bank. Better ideas, better banking. 704 left in the conflict, and the Huskies leading Pacific from the Big West out of Stockton, California, 58 to 44. Along with Francis Williams, I'm Kevin Calabro, and the third member of our team is Jen Mueller. And Jen, it's holidays are the for family, right? Well, they are, although I got to tell you, John Brockman is not too happy about that right now. Let me explain. You know, I'm sure that you being the music aficionado that you are, Kevin, know that ACDC is playing tomorrow night at the Tacoma Dome. John Brockman has had that date circled on his calendar for months because his uncle is the tour manager for the legendary rock band. So he was looking forward to going to the concert, maybe going backstage to meet the guy. So I asked him about it today. He said, are you pumped up? He goes, no, tomorrow we have to have Thanksgiving dinner 
as a family, I don't get to go. I said, you can't get your mom to move it a couple hours. She goes, Mama B said no, so it's a no-go for me, guys. <laughs> He's got to have the band over to the house. Yeah, well, that's what I over. said. You know, after the game today, hey, just hey. have him over for some pie. Easy way to fix that. <laughs> Lead singer comes through the door in those short pants. You know it's on. 6.55 to go in the second half. 58.45. Here's Thomas with it. Isaiah out there along with Demon. He has had a heck of an afternoon as Justin Demon shooting the ball beautifully. Five of eight, two of four from Rain. Well, Pacific came back with their starters after that timeout. They're going to try to make their last push. The Huskies come back with Isaiah. One of our keys to the game was could Isaiah Thomas keep his teammates involved and kind of run the show for the Huskies. So let's see how he does coming down the stretch here in this final six and a half minutes. Thomas runs down a rebound, resets inside to the big man. Give him a touch. Gant is fouled. Taking it to the rim. And Lorenzo Romar looks out at Thomas and points to him and acknowledges the hustle play as he ran down that loose ball. Thomas will come over for a conversation with Cameron Dollar. Pretty good guard in his day at UCLA. Part of a championship team. Anthony Brown with a foul. And Gant to get a couple here. 7,500 in attendance here this afternoon at the University of Washington. Thomas, five points, three assists, the four turns. Had an economical line in the two-point loss to the Gators of Florida. 17 points, nine assists. Only attempted one field goal in the first half. But that's because he was finding the postman, John Brockman. Gant gives the Huskies a 14-point lead. 6-11 to go in a ball game. Troyer hadn't been able to get him on track. But he had a beauty there over tough resistance. Yeah, well, he's tall enough to shoot over Dentman. And again, as long as he can get his feet set, he's not really an off-the-dribble type shooter. But if he can go to his left where he can square up, the Husky guards are all pretty diminutive, and he can shoot over them. Brockman faces on Brown, but Brown at hand. And as soon as you pivot, you know you're going to have to get a little space, otherwise the foul. Brown had hands on him. Chad Troy out of Seattle prep. First thing he did, number one, was, you know, he was patient, made a little ball fake, and again, he's about 6'4", and he was just basically on that one able to just jump over Dentman and knock down that 15-footer. John Brockman, 11 points, five rebounds, five of eight shooting from the field. It's really been difficult for either team to really get into any type of a flow or a rhythm. There's been so many turnovers, and there's been so many fouls called in this game that the, the offensive flow has been uh, very difficult to find for both teams. Rebound off the missed free throw. Elster will see it up. Brockman, the offensive rebound, but he's fouled. So we'll keep it on this end, and the Huskies, Brockman, will again go to the line. Brockman has had an illustrious career here at the University of Washington. He's 90, make it 89 points to move into ninth in the all-time scoring list. And he would move ahead of a couple of guys that maybe you've heard of. Detlef Schrempf, who's in attendance here tonight or this afternoon, and Brandon Roy. 1,400 points. And has recorded a double-double in 45 of 102 games. Here's a look at Detlef. Lemon Trem, I think he can still play. Yeah, he might be in better shape. Every time I see him, he's on his bike. Yeah. He might be in better shape now he than when he was playing. Road. He loves the road bike. Hey, hey, hey. Dentman nearly picked it away from Troyer. Keeps it alive. Has to steal. Great find. Thomas blowing to the glass to lay it up and in. Marvelous and that, play by Dentman. And that pressure out front has been the bread and butter for the Huskies all day long. Although they've turned it over a lot, haven't necessarily done a good job from the foul line, their defensive pressure has been consistent all day. And that and Tom Dexter have really been the difference in this game. 17-point lead, and Joe Ford comes back with a nice crossover, slithering his way to the cup. The Huskies can continue the pressure to put this one in the books. Thomas to pull up. Go. 
Now that move there from Thomas we were talking about Westbrook and his moving on to the next level in the NBA but for guys quick as Thomas and for Westbrook guys that are athletic and get to the cup that little pull up 10 footer can be lethal in the arsenal. Oh, yeah, if you can right. have if you can have that mid range game that in between game and again have an ability to use the glass which a lot of kids don't do anymore it, it can be a really in your arsenal and make you a very effective offensive player because you know the defense is on their heels anyway expecting Absolutely. you to blow or try to get to the cup and leap over them we'll take a look at our GMC professional grade brought to you by Gamblin Motors and Enumclaw there's a little man getting to the cup but a tremendous find by Denton well, Denton was just relentless going after that loose ball picked it up and had the presence of mind to look up and Thomas being the scorer that he is was on the streak and they find him for the layup. Well Denton's 5'11 and Thomas measures out at 5'8. But they have such great quickness and ball handling skills that uh, sure there'll come a time when maybe there's some, some matchup problems obviously bigger guards will try to post them but uh, for now anyway in the open court uh, those two are poison. Yeah well that's what they're going to have to do They're They're, they're going to have to pressure people and make it difficult for them to handle the ball and take away vision so they won't have clear and easy lanes to pass the basketball. Benoit Overton is probably their best on the ball defender. Um, I think Dentman probably does the best job of getting out in the passing lanes and I think the defensive end is something where the Husky staff is still trying to get Thomas to buy in and he will because he's a, a pretty driven player and wants to be successful. 435 left in the ball game. Huskies lead it 64 49. I'll tell you about some upcoming games the Huskies have here in a moment when we get a chance. Thomas. Dentman hops to his feet. Why not? He's been on fire, has Dentman. Brockman trying to get to the ball and he, he get to the ball is bodied out of there. And a foul called on Brockman. So Pacific will come the other way to shoot the one and one. That's the third foul on John. Well, with a 15 point lead with just a little over four minutes to go, the Huskies come out of that timeout and really exhibit a lot of patience. They're at a point in the game now where you know, both teams will be at the foul line on all fouls. So be patient, look for good shots, and uh, you have an opportunity to pretty much salt this game away if your defense stays solid. Sam Willard. 6'9", sophomore from Pierre, South Dakota. Well, that's quite a contrast from Pierre, South Dakota to the San Joaquin Valley, Stockton, California. Beautiful arena, the Alex Spanos Arena. Built by Alex Spanos, the great developer in that area. And of course, uh, one time at the San Diego Chargers. Uh, spent some time there a couple weeks ago. A beautiful new baseball facility also there on campus. And uh, you know they have 6,400 students. Yep. No small school. First chartered university state of California, 1851. Been around a while. Here's Denton. 357 left. 6450. Here's Thomas on the wing. Hands the screen high. Whistle before the shot. And the Huskies turn it back to Pacific. Timeout called on the floor. Defense name of the game for the Huskies in the second half. Oh, no question. Led by Justin Dittman getting out in the passing lane. And again, can Isaiah lead this Husky team coming down the stretch? We'll find out here in just a few minutes. Huskies on top of Pacific, 14 points large with 341 remaining. Good overplay of the ball. Brockman leading to a bucket. Well, I think the one thing the Huskies are going to have to do as they get into this season, they have to come up with a defensive identity. I, I don't think that they're going to always have the offensive lapses that they had last week in Kansas City, but they have to be able to depend on their defense where they can dig down and get stops. And although Pacific is a lot more patient basketball team, not necessarily wanting to get up and down the floor, the 86 and the 73 points they gave up last week to Kansas and and Florida are not the type of defensive efforts that are going to win you games. Seven steals for the Huskies this afternoon. Terrell Smith scoops and scores between a double team. And now full court pressure applied by Pacific. Well, with three minutes to go, Pacific's going to have to pull out all the stops and see if they can create some turnovers and uh, get some easy looks. But the Huskies do a nice job of attacking that pressure and getting all the way to the basket. And Pondexter 
Now is up to 16 points to go along with the 11 rebounds. Smith trying to shake Denman, has the advantage, slide step to the window, laid it in. And when he can get out on the wing and play his natural position, which is the two, he's much bigger and much stronger than pretty much any guard he'll play against. Oh, look out. Thomas leads Gant to the promised land, and the right hand, stiff one. Well, two times Pacific goes into full court pressure after a made basket, and two times the Huskies get a layup. 14 point lead. Troyer. Duke. Rebound to Smith. Bond Dexter hauls it down. As Francis mentioned he has had a big, big afternoon. Been very aggressive through the course of this game. 16 points, 12 boards. Huskies turn it over. Troyer the other way. His dad, Mike, played for the Huskies back in the day. Actually has the freshman scoring record, 52 points in a single game. And the Huskies will call a timeout. Take a look at the lead pass from Thomas, throwing it right into the sweet spot where Darnell Gant can get on the trampoline. Gant, who chose to redshirt last year, uh, sat there, watched the games, tried to get an understanding of this Husky system, and has worked his way into the starting lineup as a redshirt freshman. And he's a guy, as Coach Romar told us earlier today, is not concerned about the points, the stats, just wants to do what he needs to do to find a way to get on the floor. And he's doing it by hitting the open man, crashing the boards, playing strong defense. Blue collar guy. Got to have him. Artem Wallace is on the floor now with the Huskies. Wallace, the 250-pound senior, right here in the state of Washington. Toledo High School. Thomas goes down. He's tied up. And the possession arrow will go to the Huskies. And Thomas got a little nonchalant with the ball that time. I mean, it's uh, it's time to go ahead and put these guys away with 14-point cushion and a minute and 44 to go. Huskies' first Pac-10 game will be January 3rd at Washington State. What a big one that's going to be. But... Plenty of Husky basketball before then, all at home. This is the first of eight straight for the Huskies. Coming up next, Oklahoma State. Over to Triggers, Wolfinger the rebound. Nope. Tip volley off the mark from Thomas. Wolfinger gets it back and just slaps it in, and he's fouled. First time we've seen Wolfinger today. Seven-footer who actually is an excellent outside shooter, but they're going to need him as they get into that Pac-10 season that you're talking about. He's a seven-footer who's really just kind of starting to, to find his way coming off of an injury. And uh, if they can get some, some uh, contribution from him, it's only going to make them that much tougher. Yeah. Come down with a rebound, keep it at shoulder level, and stick it right back up and in there, big fella. Joe Wolfinger, the junior from Portland, Oregon. As Francis mentioned, he's uh, been hampered with some foot problems. Huskies pressure breaks Pacific again, and Thomas the other way to roll it in, and he is fouled. And he landed awkwardly, and he's limping slightly as he heads to the free throw line. Yeah, he did, but, but Smith in the open court gets his pocket picked by Thomas, and we know that when he gets the ball, he knows what to do with it. He's going straight to the basket. Thomas with a nice line this afternoon. Nine points, four assists, four rebounds. And four of ten shooting. Follows his miss. Adam Wallace to follow. Thomas, look at him, right, right down there in the mixer going to work. Spikes it off of a Pacific player's heel and out of bounds. Well, you love the hustle. You love the hustle. And I'm sure Coach Thomason, conversely, is not real happy about the fact that they are being out hustled. But the other side of that is they missed another free throw, which uh, is an area that we've talked about all day that the Huskies are going to have to show some improvement in, especially in those close games coming down the stretch. The schedule coming up for the Huskies. Well, they've got Oklahoma State next on the docket. And us on uh, December the 4th. Uh, that is the purple T-shirt day presented by... FSN, 8 o'clock start, then Texas Southern, Portland State, Eastern Washington, Lehigh, Montana, and Morgan State to get them tuned up. The Pac-10 schedule, which begins 
on the 3rd of January when they're in Pullman to take on Washington State. The home opener for the Huskies in terms of conference play will be on the 8th against Tommy Amaker's Stanford Cardinal. That's at 7.30 in January the 8th. So. Be prepared for some good college hoops here in the state of Washington. Not only the Huskies, but the Cougars. And Zaga off to a tremendous start. I tell you, I think, I think the Bulldogs put themselves just watching them play over the last couple of nights, Francis. They are a legit national championship caliber team. Yeah, they're 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 probably good enough to have a chance to really win the whole thing. No doubt about it. Ball rattled free. Corey Hawkins is on the floor. And that means Hawkins, maybe uh, here he is with the ball, number 24, maybe familiar to you, 6-1 guard. His father, Percy Hawkins, played for so many years opposite Gary Payton for the great Sonic basketball teams in the mid-90s, coached by George Carl. The Hawk, of course, played at Bradley for the then the Braves in Peoria, Illinois, and led the nation in scoring. His daddy was a tremendous scorer. I think he averaged close to 32 a game his senior yeah. year at Bradley. Yeah, he could really fill it up. Look at Brandon. I remember he was running around as one of the ball boys. <laughs> yeah. Hawk could bring the kids in and just turn them loose. Absolutely. 19 seconds left in this one, and the Huskies leading by 18. Huskies got the turnovers taken care of. Handled the ball and moved it crisply as they have through most of the second half. They've been very impressive. Yeah, they really have, huh? especially with that defensive pressure, as you mentioned. Huskies win it here. Big over Pacific, 72. To 54 for Francis Williams and Jen Mueller. I'm Kevin Calabro. We say so on from Seattle, where the final is University of Washington 72, Pacific 54.